you're thinking about using the cabinet transformation kit, you probably want to know how well it holds up. And so I'm going to show you how well it holds up in the bathroom. There are a few places where there's some little dings or chips in the paint, and I will show you those. Um, you can tell that overall it looks really good. When I was cleaning out my garage recently, I found an unopened container of the base color that I used here. This color is called Nightfall Blue, and it's a really pretty dark navy color. We're going to try touching up those um, spots here with this leftover paint. If you want to see the full transformation from before, make sure you click this link to go watch that tutorial. So let's get some close-ups of what's looking really good and what needs just a little bit of help. Here I'm just going to pan across the front of everything for you. So you can see there's a little bit of problem with that top drawer, um, but nothing else major is standing out when you just kind of look at everything all at once. This is down one set of the cabinets. This is the other set of cabinets. Again, not too bad, but a couple things I will touch up. And then this is like underneath where there's a few little nicks where shoes hit it when you're just standing there sometimes. Okay, so here's a close-up of that top drawer. Um, this is where it's being grabbed to pull open the drawer. And so over time, it's just smudged a bunch of that paint off. This looks like something maybe hit it and got a little bit off of there. Um, and then this is the side that's right next to the bathtub. So there's a little bit of maybe water damage. And then this, I don't know what this is. Uh, knowing me, it's either like some hair dye or black paint from a project. Lots of little like nicks and um, chips off of... Uh, I don't know, like the little baseboard part that's there at the bottom. Okay, so I'm starting out with this little micro sander and I'm trying to just patch some places first. So I'm just scuffing up where I'm going to repaint. Um, there's another couple of places over here. So I'm just roughing up the surface of that old top coat to make sure that my paint will uh, stick to it just fine and then use a cloth to wipe off any of the dust that that creates. If you have a chance to take your old paint to the hardware store and actually have them run it through their paint mixer, that's not a bad idea. And that might get all of the you know solid stuff that settled out at the bottom. I didn't do that and so I'm just going at it with a fork to pull up everything from the bottom and then I mix this up at least 15 or 20 minutes. Um, about 10 minutes at a time to just kind of make sure that that was broken up and all incorporated because if you don't do that, you run the risk of having uh, the color be off or the texture be off. You just want it um, all mixed up. Okay, so here I am checking it with my stir stick. You can see it is still pretty runny, like it's not as thick as what you would use as like a wall paint, uh, but that's what you need to do at least two coats. So I've just put some on a paintbrush here and starting down at uh, the bottom baseboard. I'm painting over all that top edge that I'd sanded off before. What's really nice with doing this touch up is that I didn't um, feel the need to tape anything off. I did uh, put some paper down on the floor where I was mixing up the paint to try and protect that. So to do this patch section, I kind of started in the middle each time and then feathered out to the top and to the bottom. All right, so after about two hours, I've let that dry. I'm going to come back and do a second coat. And then we'll let that dry for a couple hours. All right, so what I'm using as my top coat now is this Minwax Satin Finish Polycrylic. Uh, even if I had any leftover clear coat from the original application of this four years ago, I wouldn't want to use it. Like I wouldn't trust it to um, apply well. So I was kind of just crossing my fingers here. Um, I have this brush that I bought new. It's specifically labeled for stains and clear coats. And so I'm just putting a real thin layer over those patches and kind of feathering out past the patch. And then after this dries for about four or five hours, we're gonna come back and take a look and see what our result is. As suspected, um, looking at all of these patches that dried, you can see exactly where I painted and then exactly where I put um, the new clear coat over the top. 
So this is obviously not gonna work for actually fixing up um, the places that I need to touch up. So here's how I'm gonna go about it instead. And that's part of the reason that I wanted to do this panel over here first, um, so that I could kind of test some stuff along the way and it wouldn't be visible from the front. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, take some 220 grit sandpaper and do a real light sanding over everything. So after doing a light sanding with that 220, uh, I'm brushing away all the dust again with a clean cloth. To help with the brushing, I actually poured some of this out into a wider dish so that the brush more easily fits down inside of it. And now that I'm doing this one big flat panel, I'm doing um, long brush strokes down from the top and then up from the bottom. You want to overlap it just a little bit when you go on to the next section. And if you can see up close to the end of those brush bristles, I'm not putting very much of this polycrylic on to the brush each time. Uh, I'm just dipping it down in a little bit. Um, that helps to reduce um, drips. And then when that whole panel is covered, uh, you're just gonna let it dry completely, like overnight. And in just a minute, I'll show you the result and you can see it's so much better and it covers up all the places where I did those little patches. This is going to work. I'm ready to work on the problem spots on the front of the vanity. So I'm starting here with the worst offender, this spot on the top of the drawer that has been used to pull it open. So I'm just sanding that smooth first. Then I'm gonna sand over the whole drawer front so that it will take that polycrylic uh, just the same as the patch does. Another time saver here was I didn't worry about removing drawers or doors from their positions, and I didn't worry about taking off any hardware. Just like before, brush away all the dust. I even used this uh, little brush to get right in by the hardware to make sure that nothing had settled there. This drawer just has a little spot that needs some attention, but since I'm gonna be patching it and putting the polycrylic on it, I want to sand down the whole front of the drawer just like I did with the top one. The micro zip works great for getting down in between the handle. For this cabinet door, I just needed to do this front panel. So again, sand and wipe off. Then come in with paint on a brush and add paint to any of the places that need it. Feather it out well towards the edges to make sure you don't have any uh, noticeable marks for where the paint is left. I found a slightly larger brush to put paint on this flat panel here. And this one didn't really have any paint chipped off of it, um, but something had left a big streak mark. Um, you know, it could have been something that I spilled there or it dripped off and I tried to clean it too aggressively and so it kind of damaged the top coat or something. Uh, but this is working great. And all I had to do was this front panel part. I didn't have to do the whole part of the cabinet door, which was really nice and a huge time saver. After a couple of hours, come back in with a second coat to cover up all the patches and then do a third coat also if you need it. After that second coat has dried for at least eight hours, so maybe overnight is good, you can come in and add that top coat of polycrylic. You can see I'm doing light smooth brushes just like I did for the side panel. It's a little bit trickier here inside the hardware, but just get as close as you can and then come back and do a little check for drips because sometimes uh, some of that polycrylic can kind of collect around the hardware and you want to be able to brush that away before it dries. With the drawers, I made sure to also get the little bevel that goes around the edges. That way everything will look totally uniform when it dries. It was just gonna be too tricky uh, to try and get a good stopping point or to not let any of that um, get over off of the brush when I was doing the flat part of it. 
double check the corners and edges for any drips before you move on to the next drawer or the next section. For this cabinet door, I did the flat part and then I went into the bevel, but not to the outside frame. I could see that I was going to be getting some drips and stuff in there, and so it was easiest to just extend that into uh, those little crevices. And then just make sure to go back and check these little inside edges, or again, down at the corners, to wipe away any place where it's dripped or pooling, and that will keep a nice clear finish as it dries. And the next day, this is how everything looks. Everything matches, there's no difference between the surfaces that I patched or recoded and the ones that were original, which is a win in my book. All right, and there you have it. So I hope that was really helpful if you were thinking about doing this whole process to your cabinets or if you've done it already and need to do some touch-ups uh, I think the biggest thing is just make sure that you do sanding over a whole section that you can do with that uh, polyacrylic coat over. And honestly, I liked working with that better than the top coat that came with my rust oleum kit. I felt like it was a little thinner, which meant it went on a little smoother and didn't have as many bubbles. So here's another tip for you. If you have already painted your cabinets and it has that top coat on there from the rust -Oleum kit, and there's edges where it's bubbled up or become cloudy. You'll do a light sanding on that and then cover it with this uh, clear polycrylic in the satin finish. It will keep the color, it will keep the right shine, and uh, those cloudy spots will be gone. So I'll link in the description the specific products that I used for this kind of uh, touch up and refresh. Make sure you go watch the original video too for some other um, kind of hints along the way. I loved being able to do this. It looks so much better and I didn't have to take off any hardware. I didn't remove any cabinet doors. Uh, so it went much faster, of course, than the original process. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, like this video if you learned something new and I hope you subscribe so you'll see what I have going on next time. See you later. Bye.